thank you, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God. That's the way we feel this morning, Lord. We dare not take one step. We cannot take one step, Lord God. Father, without you holding our hands, Lord. Without your guidance, Lord God. Without your protection. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. pray our gracious and eternal heavenly father lord we deem it such a privilege this morning lord father to by faith come in these doors lord god and feel the spirit of the living god lord to feel your power lord god to feel your anointing and lord god to really realize lord that we are nothing to begin with lord father lord god the bible says we were born in sin we were shaped in iniquity, Lord God. We had our backs turned to you, Lord God. But Father, Lord God, you came and redeemed us, Lord God. And here we stand as a people, Lord God. Not just any people, Father, but a redeemed people this morning, Father. Oh, Lord God, we come, Lord, to you, Lord. Knowing, Lord God, that we only want to hear from you, Lord. May you come and bless us this morning. Lord, may you come and speak to our hearts, Lord. You know that we are needy, Father. You know what we have need of, Father. When we, Lord God, got up this morning, Lord, you knew what we have need of, Father. And Lord, you brought us to the house of the Lord. And Father, we come to rejoice. We come to, Lord God, to give you honor and glory, Father. May you come and take me off the scene, Lord. May you use me this morning as a tool in your hand, Lord. And Father, Lord God, may you close my lips, Father, where I am not supposed to say, Lord, and Father, may you put the words in my mouth, Lord. And Father, we pray that you will bless your people, bless the reading of the word. And Father, we commit the meeting into your lovely hands. For we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, if you will turn with, with me to three portions of Scripture. Uh, that's St. John chapter 15, verse 16, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, and Psalms 89, verse 15. So, forgive me for the, for the hopping of the scriptures, amen? So, John chapter 15, verse 16. And if you have it, it reads as follows, amen. Ye have not chosen, yeah. ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit like that, amen. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Amen. What a promise. Amen. And then Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. If you have it, it says that in the dispensation, forgive me, <laughs> I was reading uh, chapter 1, verse 10. There. Here we go. For he, for we are his workmanship. I like that. Created, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that he should walk in them. Can I read it again? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And then the last one is, Psalms chapter, chapter 89, and that's verse 15, amen? This is a very familiar one, and I'll draw my inspiration from here. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, amen? You may be seated. 
Amen. Just before I give my title, I would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank our precious brother Emil for the message on Wednesday. Amen. For those that are on Wednesday, amen, can we give the Lord a hand of praise? His title was Unity of the Spirit, amen, and we enjoyed it so much. And uh, even yesterday, I was beginning to think, you know, just uh, when the uh, committee met yesterday, it, there's so much power in unity, you know, and uh, we got through so much just for the day. And it was, it was such a great thing because we are planning for the 6th of October, which is next week. And it was just so great to see when unity, when people are in unity. Now, I know Pastor, he always said this one thing. He said, you can take one stick and you can break it.
it just shows that God is interested in your life, young people. He wants to be so invested in you that He even planned a whole plan of redemption for you. He's interested in your life, young people. He wants to see you successful. He wants to see you break through. He wants to see you serving Him. in your heart. God put down in your heart a predestinated seed. Is that right? Hallelujah. Before the foundation of the world. So God knew that he was going to come searching for you. Oh, glory. You know, and, and this is so striking why this struck me so. Is that God already made the plan for me. He already put the seed in my heart. He already put the seed in your heart. And then you are lost. You came down to the earth not knowing him. Oh, glory. I don't want to go ahead of myself. But Brother Ram says, you know what? He says, Christ came down to the earth. And he didn't bypass his theophany. He was the word God. Made flesh. And then he came and walked on the face of the earth. But he says, but you and me came differently. Amen. You and me came differently. We bypassed our theophany. That means we didn't have a consciousness yet. And we were roaming the face of the earth. Not knowing who God is. But God knew who you were. You were in the Shabin. You were going from party to party. You were going into the taverns. You were drinking. You were smoking. But God was watching you all that time. I think that's remarkable. So no matter what your sin, he knew he put a seed down there and he put an angel over you. Amen, Brother Clyde. He put a guardian over you to watch you wherever you go. Now I like this. He says the Holy Spirit today, the Holy Spirit today, young people, is hunting out honest hearts that will believe this message. That's what he's doing. He's, he's, he's trying to find an honest heart. Just like the, the pastor preached last week. There's a change of heart. The Holy Spirit is here today. Trying to find an honest heart that will believe the message. And will stand with his word. Now I like this, Brother Bram says, Everything in the Bible that was promised is to that believer. When you accept it in its fullness... Not partially, not some of the time, but in its fullness, not serving God maybe sometimes on a Sunday and on a Wednesday, but all the time, God wants to see you in his fullness. That's why he's hunting you out. He's seeking. Oh, glory. Amen. We're going to find out. So many is walking on the face of the earth. But the Holy Spirit is also brooding over you. Bringing you to the message of the hour. You didn't come into this building. Okay. You didn't come into this message haphazardly. You didn't. God knew that you are going to be here. He knew that you are going to be here. So he says, and when you accept it in its fullness, and God knows that you will do it. He gives you the abstract. Oh, glory. Do you know what the abstract is? That's the title deed that he put into your hands. So now you don't have to do anything. You're just sitting there. But God comes looking for you. And then he finds you. And then he gives you the abstract. Amen, brother Gavin. That's so powerful. The Holy Spirit is coming after you. And then it's almost like you don't have to do anything almost. He's the one that put it there. All you got to do is say, Lord, 
Here I am. Whosoever will, let him come. Now, Brother Bram says, revelation of his word. He says the Greek word, a revelation is apocalypse, which means unveiling. This unveiling is perfectly described in an example of a sculptor unveiling his work of statuary, exposing the, uh, to the onlooker. God has pride in what he does. He says it's uncovering. It's revealing what was previously hidden. I want to tell you today, you have been previously hidden. He says it's uncovering, revealing what was previously hidden. Now watch here. Not, now the uncovering is not the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ. But it's the revelation oh my, of the future works in the oncoming seven church ages. That means when God looked down, when He unraveled here, He was unraveling because it was what was to come. There were seven church ages all the way from Paul's day to this day. God was revealing something. He was revealing. Okay, I'm not going to get ahead of it. He says, the importance of revelation by the Spirit to a true believer can never be overemphasized. Young people, we have to have a revelation. We cannot go anywhere without a revelation. The old ones, the, old, the, the elders, they have received the revelation. And it kept them all the way till now. And believe me, it's still keeping them. If you want to stand the same way. Now, if you think it's boring, well, I tell you one thing. It's coming on a long way. And God must reveal it to you. And when he reveals it to you, then it's no longer boring. But then you take pride in God. Then you want all of God. Oh, glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how God works in you. He says the importance of revelation by the Spirit to the true believer can never be overemphasized. Revelation means more to you than perhaps you realize. You know, that means we don't have a consciousness yet. We still have to realize how much we need revelation. Because intellectualism, your comprehension can only go that far. That's why when Christ was walking with them all the time, and he says, now, you know, that's so powerful because he was walking with them all the time. That means they were going to church together. He was the very one. And then when his question was, who does man say that I am? They couldn't answer him. But they were going to church with him all the time. But it took a revelation by a man called Peter. That when the question was asked to Peter specifically, he says, who does man say that I am? He said, thou art the Christ. Young people, I want to tell you, it's going to take revelation of God's word. And when you receive that, and it says, blessed art thou, Simon Peter. For flesh and blood is not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And if you notice, there was something special for Peter. You see, he yielded himself to God. The, the prophet says he was, a, he, he was enthusiastic. I think he was more enthusiastic than all of the rest of them. And, and he just wanted to know God. He wanted to bathe himself in his presence. And God was honored to that. He had to give him a revelation. He was probably studying the word. He was watching the word wherever it goes. And he could see that this isn't just a man. We're not serving a dead God. This message is not dead. This message is alive. This message comes from above. The 
first message is what you're watching. So every move that it makes, you move. So he says here, the whole Bible is the revelation of God. The whole church is built upon the revelation of God. There is no other way to know God, only by revelation. To whom the Son will reveal Him. Revelation. Everything is revelation. Amen. So now Paul says here, he says, forgetting those things which are in the uh, behind, which are behind, and reaching forth for those things which are before. So that means whatever we left behind, that's what this message does. It gives you a clean slate. Can I say it again? This message puts you on perfection. So when you walk out of these doors today, you don't have to walk out the same way you came in. You can walk out a different person. He says, forgetting those things that were in the past. He says, I press toward the mark of God. I press toward the prize. Let me say it. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That means that there's a high calling that God has put on your life. Young people, I want to tell you, God has put a high calling in your life. And you got to stand up and recognize that God has a high calling in your life. But you see, every demon power is going to press against you. That's why the Bible says, you got to press. I press. Do you know whenever you're pressing something, that means there's an external force pressing against you. It doesn't want to see you grow. It doesn't want to see you succeed. It want to keep you bound. So you got to press all the time. I press. I'm pressing to hold the mark. Now you know the thing is, the, the prophet says, he says, it's like that lily. She was in the muck and mire down there. And there was darkness all around her. And I want to liken you to a lily this morning. I know it's bad out there. It's dark out there. There's so many things that's going on. So many things, technology. Amen. There's new ideas. There's new dress codes. There's new fashion. Trying to trap you. But I'll come to that. Trying to hold you down. And you in darkness. But you got to press through. And he says that Lily pressed through the darkness. Pressed through the muck. Pressed through the mire. But when it came through out of there. That means a Lily can't grow. In the midst of darkness. It can't push out. So he says, forgetting those things in the past, I pressed toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And this high calling was put upon your life. It's not just haphazard. You can't take it lightly. It's a high calling in your life. He says, now notice the greater works was to have the power in the church. Not to only heal the sick. Cast out devils by prayer, but to impart eternal life to others. That's the power that you have. Is to impart eternal life to them that are out there. You don't only have the power to heal the sick. You know what the prophet is saying? You can pray for the sick and they shall be healed. You can come against a demon and cast him out but not only that you got the power to impart eternal life he says oh the holy ghost was coming and giving into your hands the church to impart life oh that's what calvary meant it took stoop degraded men and women and lifted them into a place to be sons and daughters of God 
attribute sons. Not just attribute sons, attribute sons of his spirit. He says here, place to, to the sons and daughters of God to heal the sick and impart eternal life. He says, did you know God put you here for some other purpose besides raise, raising hogs to educate? Besides raising hogs and to educate your children. God put you here, sons and daughters of God. And if you fail to get that, you fail to receive the very purpose God put you on the earth to be. No matter how honest and how decent, how moral and you might be. He says, how good you might be. What fine social fellow you might be. You will, you will still miss the calling unless you serve the Lord. Unless you serve the Lord Jesus and become a son and daughter of God. <clears throat> One more thing on the high calling. And this is to show you that you are attribute sons. He says now you are ordained to life. Not to death. That means there is something upon you. God has ordained you to life. Ordained means there's something to come. You have a mission. And God has put that in your life. He's ordained you to the life eternal. If you're not ordained to see it, you won't see it. He said they have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. How thankful you should be. So we're living in a horrible time this, in this season. He says, but a horrible time for the unbeliever. And we're living in one of the most dangerous times of all. All that ever was since the world began. No prophet, no apostle, never in no time ever lived in such a time as we live now. This should make you realize what a time you're living in. He says, it is written in the skies. It's written on the face of the earth. It's written in the newspapers everywhere. But we are living in the glorious time as a believer. Oh, glory. I don't think you caught me this morning. I don't think you caught me this morning. You are living in the glorious time for the believer. Hallelujah. He says, prophets long to live in your day. Can you believe it? They long to live in your day. Brother Bram ends this one. He says, but they didn't get the privilege. What time are you living in? Paul wanted to live in your day. Irenaeus wanted to live in your day. Let's go back. Moses, a great prophet of God, wanted to live in your day. You've got to ask yourself the question, why is that? Why did you want to live in this time? This is the most horrible time for the unbeliever. But for you and I, brother, sister, it's the glorious time. That means something is laying ahead. That means there's a greater work here. Brother, sister, I'm telling you, this is a glorious time. And you have the privilege in this day to manifest the full word of God. That means when you walk, when they see you walking in town, when they see you walking in school, when they see you walking on your job, there's something different about you. He says the prophets of old long to live in this hour, but wasn't privileged. I want to say this morning, the Bible says we ought to cast down imaginations and everything high, every high thing that exalted itself against God. Everything that exalted itself against God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. He says, cast it down. It's something you, that you possess. 
it's not an imagination. If you really have it, it's just as real as you as anything else. It's just as real to you as riding an automobile. It's just as real as you know you sitting in the church. It's just as real as you hearing my voice. It's a substance. It's not an imagination. This message is not an imagination. We didn't receive it as an imagination. It's a substance. Not an emotion. But something that you have. I like the way the prophet puts it in your hands. And it comes to you by hearing the word of God. That's only. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. That puts you back to where you, your faith. And then if, if it's not some individual, it's not a, in a man, it's not in an organization, it's not in a group of people, it's in God. Because God is the word. See, faith is God. So we're not talking about an imagination, young people. Today they want to paint a picture for you. They have so many fantasies. They have so many games out there. They can put you virtually. You can have your own virtual world. You can almost go create your own virtual world. An imagination. Something that doesn't benefit you at all. I don't sound angry, do I? <laughs> It's an imagination. But what we have received is not an imagination. We have received something higher than what man's ideas can allow you to see. Brother Bram says, all these Hollywood movies is trying to create an imagination so that when the true thing comes, you are now hit. But the hit is smaller. It's lighter. They make movies with special effects. Do you know why they're doing that? It's so that when the real thing does come, people's going to be like, oh, we've seen it before. But they don't understand that God is moving. That this thing is not an imagination. It is real. I want to encourage you this morning. This message is real. We're so glad that we have, we have a God. Oh my. You know, I see them at work. They had a function, a spring day function. And you see these guys coming out of there, dressed as women. They want to they wanna bring some fun to the crowd. So they dress up as women. At work. And they have their fun there. It's because they have no God, you see. They have nothing to hold on to. They are trapped. They have nothing to offer you but fun. But it doesn't benefit the soul. So Brother Ram says, we're so glad. Now he doesn't say, I'm so glad. He says, we're so glad that we have a God. Not an imaginary God. Not an imaginary idol. Not an imaginary spirit. There's nothing imaginary about it. But it's the true one of God. The true and living God who lives in you, who lives in us, but we being living images of God, the Holy Spirit, not speaking through a statue, hey, not speaking through a statue, but speaking directly to redeemed vessels. Are you redeemed vessels this morning? Are you redeemed vessels this morning? God is speaking to you. Brother Bram's next words, God manifested in flesh. Attribute sons of God, sons of his spirit. You are in Elohim's mind before there was a world, before there was a star, before there was a moon. There was you as an attribute in God's mind. Oh, hallelujah. He says, Elohim, that self-existent one. What message takes you to the begin before the beginning? 
They can take you to the beginning. And then they still try to give you a fruit. And say it was an apple. But brother, brother, sister, we've received a messenger. That came and took us way before the foundation of the world. And show that this message was predestinated in your heart. Hallelujah. So you were in a thought in Elohim's mind. And Brother Bram says, if you go and listen to who is this Melchizedek, which is the most powerful, oh my, it's a powerful message. Brother Bram says, that was the orphany that he saw then. He says, Moses saw theophany. But he says, the word came down. Yo was Christ on the face of the earth, in the flesh. And he was the word, getting you back to the word image. So that you can get back to your theophany. You know what? The Bible says when you die. And this I realized when I was reading that message. When you die. He says. This earthly tabernacle be dissolved. You have one already waiting. That's a hope that we have. Is that right? When we die here. No matter what it is brother. That's why, that's why Paul could say. Death where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? But thank be to God. Do you know why he could say that? Because he knew if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, just three feet from me, I will slip into another body. And right now, Brother Bram says, that body is what you're hearing from. You're hearing from theophany. You're hearing from your theophany. So, but hold on. When you die here, you go into another body. But if you're on this side of the clouds, amen, brother Thomas. If you're on this side of the clouds, you've got to come to the word image here. You mean to tell me that this fleshly body, this what I am in now, has to come to the word image? Yes. It's got to. Because when you die here, you go there to the theophany. But then the theophany comes back again to pick up earthly body. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't worry. Even this is going to be redeemed. So that's why, that's why he, he doesn't leave it in the ground. He says when he comes back, the dead in Christ rise. He still wants this body. And then the orphan comes stepping in the amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise? You may be seated. I was standing something on the enemy. And in the study that I was going through, I realized how terrible the enemy is. And what he's trying to do in this day. The Bible says, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion. Walketh about seeking whom he can devour. He's seeing who he can destroy. That's his plan. The Bible says he doesn't fly, he's not flying. He's walking. Trying to see who he can devour. He's like a roaring lion. The next scripture says, The thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's his mission. So you think that it's just all going on, but this guy has a mission. He's trying to do something. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking from up and down in it. Can you imagine? The enemy is here, and he's walking around. Now the Bible says, Put on the whole armor of God. That he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
And then he goes on to say, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against wickedness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Sure. You know, when I begin to read it slower, it like it took more effect. You know what wiles are? Cunning arts. Deceit. Craftiness. Trickery. That means the enemy is on the face of the earth. And he's following his mission. And he knows exactly what he's doing. He's trying to make it so that you... He, shh, okay. You know, there's a racing spirit that's in the world today. They put on the face of the earth to harass you. You know, when nothing is going right at work, the whole day, you've just had a bad day. It's like one after the other. The enemy is trying to harass you. He's after your heels. By the time you come home, the children is all upset. I'm not saying this about my wife, but the food is not cooked. The devil is after you all the time. All of a sudden, you, that rage comes out. Ah, there you go. But afterwards, did you ever notice what happens afterwards? You think, Listen, what made me do that? And you even apologize and say, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know what did it. I know what did it. It's the enemy. He's harassing you at every single point. You see, he has a mission. So he doesn't only start the day you wake up. He was starting last week already. You just didn't know it. A, a, a procrastination demon. A spirit. You have to do something, but you're just not getting it. Putting it off. But it's working its way. Trying to make you powerless. There's enticing demons. They're there. Their purpose, their sole purpose is to entice you. They're after you. They want to entice you so that it can lead to slavery. So that they can enslave you. And before you know it, you're enslaved with so many spirits. You know, the man called Legion. You know in the Bible? Legion, Brother Bram says, a legion of spirits went into him. Into one man, 6,000 demons in one body. That's scary. That is scary. 6,000 demons in one body. I, you, can you imagine six spirits in one man? But you see, it had to start somewhere. So one demon opens for the other. One demon opens the door for the other. It starts maybe with a smoking demon. So you just said, you know, I just want to take a little bit of a smoke. And that one demon opens up for a drinking demon. And before you know it, the drinking demon, it's a party demon. Oh, I'm just going to go and visit friends. That's what happens. The devil is trying to trap you. He's trying to get a hold of you. He doesn't want to make. He has a mission. So you go to parties. Oh, you know, I'm just going to a show. A demon slips in. And before you know it, you have a lust demon. You have a drinking demon. You have a depression demon. One door is open to the next. And you don't know what brought you there. You ask the question, how did I get here? How did my life come in equal to this? You know what? There's a rebellion demon after that. You know what a rebellion demon does? It makes you rebellious against your family. 
It makes you rebellious against your church. It makes you rebellious everywhere you go. A rebellious demon is a dangerous demon. It's a dangerous demon. You know what? After rebellious demons, you know, in the 1960s, in the, 19, in the year 1960s, all the young people in America, they fled up and began to get rebellious. America didn't know what to do. They had these bell bottoms and you know all those of the 1960s. They were rebellious. Smoking, alcohol, drugs. Rebellious demons. But each and every one of those, they went into witchery. After rebellious, rebelliousness, you go into witchery. When Saul rebelled against God, he went to the witch of Endor. And he went to go inquire from the witch of Endor to see the prophet. He actually turned to witchery because he began to get rebellious. So when you're rebellious like this, a depression demon steps in. And before you know it, you're all depressed. You're lonely. You said that's exactly where he wants you. He has a mission. This guy is smart. He's out to trap you. And before you know it, you're unbarren and unfruitful. You're barren and unfruitful. You can't give anymore. You can't worship anymore. But I got good news for you this morning. I got good news for you this morning. Let me sound the trumpet this morning. You have the token. You have a way of escape. You have heard from your theophany. Hallelujah. You don't have to be trapped. You don't have to be bound. You don't have to stay in sin. You have a way of escape. You have the token. You don't need the demons in your life. You can cast them out. Oh, glory to God, amen. You can worship God. And every sin demon in your life can be exposed this morning. It can come out of you this morning. You know, the Bible says, He says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, Oh, you all know this one. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Spirit of God will raise a standard in your life. I want to tell you this morning, no demon, no power, no depression, no lust, no rebelliousness will come on you if you've got the token. Who the son is of man is set free, is free indeed. I want to tell you, I was trapped to some of those things. I was trapped before, but I'm here to tell you, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. I've heard and I went free. What is it, brother? Attribute sons of his spirit. Not sons of, of the of, of of the devil's spirit sons of his spirit that's who you are so brother ram says your hands your hands on the people has got quickening power in it you've got quickened have you have you come to life <clears throat> has christ come become real to you has the power of God been manifested? This is a question. Are you in the church, in that church? God's provided church. I feel led to read those questions again. Have you come to life? Has Christ become real to you? Has the power of God been manifested? Are you in the church?
God's provided church. Are you in it? How do you know you've been quickened in it? Your whole thoughts, your whole being is in Christ now. Don't get tired on me. He says, and Christ is in the midst of the people proving himself alive. Proving that he is here in the days of Sodom. As it was in the days of Sodom. With them hands of those people. And their lives have been changed from the street walkers. From drunkards. From prostitutes. On the street. To genuine saints of God. Quickened. Their hands is laying upon you. They in church. By the Holy Ghost baptism. The same power of Elijah's bones. He says, is in you today. That same quickening power. So we are not scavengers, Brother Ram says. Oh, ye that raised up Christ from the grave, dwelling in you, quickened your mortal body into the presence. You recognize it. You are no longer a scavenger. You're no longer a scavenger. You're an eagle. You don't want the things of the world. You're sons and daughters of God. And I almost want to say to the enemy today, we are not scavengers today. You are not scavengers. But you are eagles. And you don't want the world. You don't want the things of the world. But you are seeking for God. You're drinking it. The world knows nothing about it. Amen. You're eating hidden manna that, the, that would never, that would never even Hallelujah. nothing of it. You're an eagle. Amen. You quickened up. Hallelujah. You can get to it. Amen. You can get down here. You got up here. Hallelujah. You got quickening power. Amen. Lift up. Hallelujah. It will quicken you. Amen. Brother Bram says here, Amen. there's a difference, you know. I'm almost done. He says here, there's a difference. Our spirit is clean. It is fresh. It is real. It's sober. Mm. And serious, but nonetheless, full of joy of the Lord. The Christian ought to be just exuberant. Oh my. And full of his pleasure in the Lord as the world is in when it savors and delights in its pleasures. Look at that. Brother Bram is comparing a Christian to the world here. And he's highlighting the differences. He says both Christians are and the, and the world are human. Both have emotions. The difference is the Christian's heart and emotions are purely on the Lord, the Lord glory. Lord of glory and his love while the world satisfies the flesh. That's the difference. You're not feasting on a man. A man and his words will fail. But you are feasting on the body word of the son of man. That's the difference. But we are all humans. But you eat differently. You're not a chicken. You're not a chicken in a barnyard. You probably were rolling with the chickens one time. But when you heard Mama Eagle, something began to ring in your heart. Now, Brother Bram says here, he says, doctor said to me one not long ago, he says, I was talking to him. He said, Brother Branham, what's the matter with those people? He's talking about them that worship. He says, they just worked up. That's what the world thinks about you. You just worked up. Whenever you tell them about God, they think that you are worked up. He says, that makes them act that way. He says, crying and and running to the altar. He said, it's emotion, Brother Branham. He says, doctor, you ought to know, uh, you would know enough. It takes something to excite the nerves before the person could get to that emotional state. So Brother Branham is saying, you're saying it's an emotion. But as a doctor, you should know better. Because something has to bring you to that state first. Something has got to work in your nerves first. 
Something has got to stir you first before you can get in emotion. Now you know what? I've heard many people say they're in an amen corner. Did you ever hear about that as Christians? They're in an amen corner. You know what? I tell you one thing. I love being in the amen corner. Can I say it again? I love being in the amen corner. Do you know why? Because I know why I'm amening. I know why I'm worshipping. They don't know why. They think that you're just amening here. But brother and sister, I want to tell you something. I noticed something about amening. It is so powerful. Because you know what? When you're out in the world, you know what? When you're about to sin, that amen comes to you here. It brings your mind back here. And before you want to sin, you think about you amening God. They think that you're just amening for nothing. You have to live up to that amen. That amen challenges you. Every amen that you do challenges you. You know what? I want to encourage you that even God has an amen. I want to encourage you. God has an amen. Brother Branham says, now this is the scripture. He says, Revelation 3.14. These things saith the amen. The faithful and true witness. Who is that faithful and true witness? I know of Jesus. He says the amen. He says the true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. That's the amen. Now brother Branham goes further. He says I want to tell you. The amen of God. Is Jesus Christ. Oh glory to God amen. You mean even God has amen? Yes. His amen is Jesus. When you amen, it's Jesus. You're not amening a man. You're not amening a man. You're amening Jesus. So you know what? When they say you're in an amen corner, you say, I'm going to stand there. I am in an amen corner. Amen, brother Gavin. We're in an amen corner. What is it? We know why we're amening. We know exactly why we're amening. When you scream and shout like that, you know why you're shouting. You shouted the victory of God. So you know what? You're not drunk as you suppose. Because a drunk man shouts and screams and makes a noise. But I am showing I'm alive. This message has done so much for me. I cannot but help amen the word of God. I thought that was quite profound. Amen. Musicians. But he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. The word endure means to suffer. It means to abide. It means to persist. It means to press on. He that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. That's the way God does his church. He gives you trial after trial. Test after test. Trial after trial. Brother Bram says, test after test. Until the life of Christ is reflected in your life. You may stand to your feet. In your life, until you become peaceful, sober, meek, gentle, ready, submissive, willing to turn your head from the things of the world and look straight to Calvary, to the one who's doing the beating. You know, as much as the devil has a mission, God is also on his mission. God is also on his mission. And the good work that he started, he's more than able, the Bible says, 
He's more than able to finish. The good work that he started in your son. The good work that he started in your daughter. The good work that he started in your unbelieving brother or sister. He's going to finish it. Can I encourage you this morning? God is not slack concerning his promises. He's going to see his word through. Just walk unconscious of fear. I like this. Brother Luke, walk unconscious of criticism. Walk unconscious of the world. Walk as you walk in Christ. Walk with him. Not paying attention to the right hand. Just keep moving on. Something comes up in the church. Walk with God. Hallelujah. Sickness strikes you. Walk with God. If your neighbor don't like you, walk with God. Just keep walking on with God. It's a testing time. But you're an attribute son, you see. You are attribute sons. You're not bound by sickness. You're already free. The devil gets confused when you say that. He wants you to admit that you got that rattlesnakes. But you didn't sign for it. You don't have it. You don't have it. You are not bound by depression. You are free this morning. You are free this morning. Let the devil hear it. You are free. Brother Bram says, Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. I'm closing. And when he went up to glory, he sent back the Holy Ghost for us to wear. The church is baptized with the mantle of Christ. These things that I do, shall you do also. That's the promise. Think on the promise. The things that I do, shall you do also. And greater than this shall you do. Now brother Ram says there's nothing greater than raising the dead. But he says a double portion of the spirit of Christ is resting upon each and every one of you this morning. A double portion. Christ said, he has overcome the world. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. Greater is the power of Christ in you than the sickness that you have in your body this morning. Greater is the power of Christ than that little besetting sin that you can't overcome. Let's take the Holy Ghost and fight the devil down. Let's fight him this morning. You are Christians. We got the spirit of truth. Let's fight the enemy. Let's fight the good fight. Let's fight the good fight. Let's put on our armor and fight the enemy. I want to end up for this. Brother Bram says, God was busy with the masterpiece. He says, with Christ. He says, with Adam. He had a masterpiece. And then that no masterpiece was struck. Here comes Jesus Christ as a masterpiece. And the Bible and the, and the prophet says, and God struck his own masterpiece. And out of it came a pride. He says, the second, the second Eve, she's also a masterpiece. I want to tell you, attribute sons of God, attribute sons of his spirit, you are a masterpiece. God has designed you in a certain way. Don't live beneath your privileges. God is working on a masterpiece. And one of these great mornings, one of these great days, he's going to unravel that masterpiece. God bless you. God bless you this morning. Let's worship God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him. Oh, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, give God praise, hallelujah. God be praised. Oh, just worship him this morning, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name.